What's going on, my young Padawans? Sorry for the late video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I've been busy the past couple of days and haven't been able to make anything. But I wanted to talk about some stuff that happened in free agency yesterday in terms of the team. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of the other teams, but um, <clears throat> I don't know why we as an organization, the Pittsburgh Steelers as an organization, don't go after higher quality players when we have the fucking money to do so. To do so, excuse me. You have about $23 million in cap space. Le'Veon Bell is not going to take up that whole $23 million in cap space. And the money that you spent yesterday was on Landry fucking Jones for two years and David Johnson, who was a veteran for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yet you won't sign Lawrence Timmons back. This is why... As a Steelers fan and as a future scout, this pisses me off. Because you look at what the New England Patriots are doing. For example, and I hate the Patriots. You know you guys know I can't stand the Patriots. But when it comes to player personnel and when it comes to trading and when it comes to drafting, Bill Belichick and the whole Patriots organization is top-notch. Look what they just did yesterday. They placed a first-round tender on um, their top cornerback, Butler. Keep in mind, Butler was an unrestricted free agent, or a, res or a free agent that they signed after the draft from West Alabama, he had the interception in the Super Bowl. And then from there, his stock just shot up. And he's a decent corner. But they're placing a first-round tender on him. Trying to get a first-round pick from him. And I am confident somebody will want to pick him up. Chances are they're probably not going to. And they also were releasing or... Um, having as an unrestricted free agent was Logan Ryan, their other star quarterback from New England. And the Pittsburgh Steelers were interested in him and ended up pulling away from that. They pulled away from Drake Kirkpatrick, which, as much as I hate the Bengals, we need somebody opposite of Artie Burns. Ross Cockrell is not the fucking answer. I hate when people say that Ross Cockrell is a lockdown corner because he is not in any shape or form. Look at Brandon Marshall. That's another one, but look at Brandon Marshall's highlights. He got manhandled. Uh, Chris, or not Chris. Uh, see, that's how pissed off I'm getting. I'm mixing up the names. Cockrell had gotten manhandled by him almost the entire game. And when you say that, Oh, Burns is an elite. Burns is not our number one corner. He pretty much shut down every wide receiver that he played against the entire year. And I know you're going to say the whole thing about Mike Wallace an 80-yard touchdown. That's one play that he gave up the entire year. That was the most noticeable one. The one where he gave up that 50-some-yard touchdown pass to Des Bryant when we played the Cowboys. Des Bryant was grabbing his face mask the entire way down the fucking field and then pushed off at the last two yards to get separation for him to catch the ball in the back of the end zone. And of course, they're not going to call any flag on that because the night before his dad died or sometime before that his dad died and he wanted to have a touchdown for his dad. But you look at the rest of the game. You look at the rest of that game, and that was towards the beginning, middle of the year. The first quarter of the season. And he shut him down. He came back. Artie Burns came back in 
the Baltimore Ravens game on Christmas Day and shut down every receiver that he played against. And in the last play, he tipped the ball and Ryan Shazier came from behind and intercepted it. Ended the game. Artie Burns is already an elite corner. And the, and the fact of the matter is that people aren't giving him the credit he deserves. You've got to be shitting me. The, the first thing that I've heard since the end of the season on Artie Burns was during the combine when they were talking about the hip rotation. And it was a 15 second clip. But they don't give him any credit. You have got to be shitting me. Sean Davis has played excellent this past season. And people say we can't win a Super Bowl with rookies in the secondary. We made it to the AFC Championship because of Artie Burns and Sean Davis. And then you have the pressure up front from Javon Hargrave, who came in when Cam Hayward went down. We are a legitimate Super Bowl contending team year in and year out from now on. But what I'm really pissed off about is you're not getting a corner when you had the opportunity to, and Logan Ryan just got signed by the Titans. You had the opportunity to get a top-tier cornerback and would still be able to pay both him and Bell at the end of this whole free agency period. And you don't get him any help? You know what that tells me? Fuck getting an outside linebacker in the first round. I don't give a fuck what you guys say. I am pissed off. The reason why we lost that AFC Championship game was because of our fucking secondary. And it wasn't because of Artie Burns, because he pretty much shut down every receiver that was playing against him. He maybe let up two passes that entire game. Ross Cockrell is not the fucking answer. He never is, and he never will be. You need to draft a cornerback round one. You need to bring in another young talent opposite of Artie Burns. Hopefully, Senquez Golson can come back this year. But if not, and you still have Ross Cockrell as our starting other outside corner, we're going to be always the Patriots' little brother. Until we can get that secondary to a contending level, which means Artie Burns is still starting on the one side, and you bring in another rookie. I, don't even get me started on Landry Jones. He did not deserve a two-year deal. If anything, it was a one-year deal and we draft the guy in the first round next year. That's what that tells me. All these things that have happened in free agency and in the offseason, take that, put it all into a sequence. What's that showing you? It's leaving a breadcrumb trail, a trail of kind of, Projecting what they're going to be doing in the future. And that is going after a secondary player round one. We can't settle for Ross Cockrell and try and pick up potentially James Harrison's replacement. We could pick up an outside linebacker round two. The That whole draft class is deep, and I know corner is too. But we need a top-tier talent opposite of Artie Burns. And that's exactly why the Patriots have made it to the Super Bowl this last year and won it. And look what they did in the offseason this year. They got rid of Martellus Bennett, who was too much money. They brought in Dwayne Allen, less money. And actually, I think he would be a better fit opposite of uh, Gronk than Bennett would be. You bring in... Um, Stefan Gilmore, who's a Pro Bowl cornerback. Say, for example, like I said, Logan Ryan just got traded to the, um, or just got picked up by the Titans. Now you have a pro, two Pro Bowl corners on your team. You have Stefan Gilmore and you have Malcolm Butler. 
And then on the offensive side, you just completed your offense. The only thing you really need is a running back. Deion Lewis is a change of pace back. He's not your not, he's not your number one. And LeGarrette Blunt needs to be a fullback now that he's in the latter half of his career. But look at what they're doing. And look at the trade bait they had with Jimmy Garoppolo. Granted, I know it was a smokescreen, but there would have been a team who fell for him. I, I would had no doubt about that. Guys, I'm pissed off. I'm sorry. I got real <laughs> emotional, to say the very least. But this is the kind of emotion I am feeling when I hear these certain news segments. We need to go after a guy by the name of Jabril Peppers, round one. I know he's not a corner. But actually, no. As much as I would love to have Jabril Peppers, and you know what? Because we're not going to probably be able to pick him up, he's probably going to be a New England Patriot. How do you feel about that? That's just adding more fuel to the fire. They want the sixth Super Bowl next year. Unless we get a secondary to be able to stop them, that's not going to happen. Or that's they're going to win another Super Bowl. It's going to be tied with us next year. We're not going to have seventh heaven. They're going to have another sixth Super Bowl, and we will always be second place. Now, to me... It's a bit of a reach, but this offseason, the bowl game that he played in, and pretty much all throughout the year, he just looks like a stealer. Check out the name Fabian Moreau, a cornerback from UCLA. He what he is six foot, two oh six, thirty one and one inch, one eighth inch arm span, nine inch hands. 38 vertical and 11-4 broad, and he ran a 4-3-5-40. But he has excellent ball skills. Check him out. Like, comment, subscribe. I made this deal. Be with you.